three, two, one, zero. Lift off. Hi, I'm Captain Tazia Reed. Hi, and I'm Master Sergeant Dewan Rucker. And today we are going to be talking with some 4-H students about uh, a video that we have queued up talking about uh, the Space Force and the Air Force and how they kind of work together uh, to kind of accomplish the Space Force mission set, uh, which is uh, in this video talking about the launch and then on-orbit op operations. Uh, today our 4-H students are Astrid, Michael, and Boaz. You guys want to go ahead and introduce yourselves real quick? We'll start with Astrid. My name is Astrid. I'm a 4 h -er from North Dakota in my second year of college, and I am super interested in learning about everything. I'm Michael, a uh, 4 -er from South Georgia. Um, I'm a pilot, and uh, I'm a second year in college. I'm Boaz, a 4 h -er from Northwest Georgia, and I'm very, very interested in space. Nice to meet you guys, and I look forward to the this discussion topics here that we're going to have as we go through this uh, this video. It's going to show us both the launch and the on-orbit operations of a satellite. What is the actual mission of Space Force? The actual mission of Space Force really is to allow freedom of access to, through, and in space. Uh, and what does that mean for you all? Basically, uh, we want to make sure that we as the United States and the United States government have the ability uh, to utilize our assets to both protect ourselves and our, our allies against any adversarial threats, whether that's in space um, or terrestrial base. This is known as a clean room. And so essentially all the, the components and the parts to the payload and the booster must be um, free of contamination. Otherwise, it'll get up in the space and probably not work uh, due to an electrical mal malfunction or some sort of uh, radiation bit flip switching um, that, that will contribute to that. Um, it looks like they've already got the payload on top of the rocket. And so now it's just showing you kind of the, the complex there. So where the, where the rocket is standing, if you can see that little opening, uh, that's where all of the, the fire from the engines and everything else is going to blast out and uh, blast down and out of. Uh, it's got a big water tank there. Uh, that water tank is actually there to kind of help uh, both to put out the, the flames in, in the fire, but also to kind of um, ease the, the pressure wave that's coming out from that engine uh, as, as the, uh, the rocket takes, takes off. We have two different, uh, what we call test ranges or, or um, launch ranges. So Cape Canaveral is our, our Eastern launch range. And then we have our uh, Western test range out at Vandenberg Air Force Base. And at Vandenberg is where uh, people like myself will go through what we call Space 100. And that's where we basically go out to learn all about launch, um, all about the different uh, mission sets in, in the Space Force. Uh, and we, we learn kind of the physics, the, the orbital dynamics of uh, satellites and, and how we control them. So it's it's really cool to, to be out there. Uh, I, I was lucky enough when I was there to be able to see an actual space launch um, in, in the flesh. So it's, it's really loud. <laughs> we were about two miles out from the launch pad and but it looks exactly like this. So it's it's a really cool experience to be a part of. And I was able to see one uh, at Cape Canaveral, uh, having been stationed down there uh, in Florida for a few years. Uh, as Captain said, like it is, I was not prepared for how loud it was um, whatsoever. Um, I, I thought my friend was, was, you know, joking around. I mean, he was like, you know, you need to wear these earbuds. I'm like, nah, I'm alright. Um, those, those quickly went in. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it's, it's an awesome sight to see. Uh, so if you haven't seen one uh, in person, I, I highly recommend it. Does any new technology come up in the span of you build, building the um, actual rocket that spanned three to five years that you know you could possibly use in the current rocket that you're building? The technology that we are using on some of these satellites and in some of the rocket boosters, um, they're they're at least we'll say three to five years old, and that's a conservative estimate. 
there's technology that's going to come out in the next hour that's going to be completely outdated 24 hours from now right so because of that as these rockets are, are constantly being built and they're being worked on you, we can't stop and say okay let's start over because the technology is old um, but what we do is we utilize that that new technology and we just put it in our toolbox and we come back to it when we can. How do the Air Force and the Space Force make sure that the satellites stay secure? Like my phone on a simpler level, for instance, a new exploit might come out for the iPhone every three months, but with the satellites being up there for a few years at a time while a new rocket is built to launch a new satellite to replace it, how is it, how is like the security maintained? 24-7, 365. <laughs> We, we have crews who are uh, constantly working, uh, not just to prevent people from getting in, but learning how people get in, so then we could possibly do the same thing to others and prevent them from getting in. Because what's the best way to stop you know, a thief from getting in your house, for instance, right? It's to know how they get in, so you can secure that. Um, so we have teams who, you know, red team, blue team, uh, you know, that work to figure out, okay, what's, the, what's an exploit that's out there? And once that team does that, then that team that discovered the vulnerability before, then goes back and says, okay, it's cool, you, you found a fix. Now let's destroy that fix that you created. Um, so it, it's a cycle, it really is. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's fun to be part of that because you're constantly being challenged because there's always a new thing. Uh, not very many people understand just how involved uh, our space assets are in our everyday life. Uh, and so, like I said earlier, we have GPS. Uh, GPS controls pretty much everything. Uh, if you think about going to the, the bank, going to the teller to, to get money out of an ATM, um, the way that our industrial systems are, are set up in the position and navigation and timing that helps keep their timing, their, their timers uh, running to a level of precision that, that you don't necessarily need in your everyday life, but they do in order to run their operations. That's all GPS. Um, any of our industrial networks or industrial uh, uh, control systems that deal with nuclear power plants, things of that sort, that's all dependent on GPS. That's all dependent on space. So when you when you talk a little bit about that from that perspective, it, it becomes easy then to see, oh yeah, we, we need a, a force that is going to help protect those assets and enable us to live our, our lives the way that we do every day. What inspires you in your everyday work? To be a part of something that is bigger than me, honestly. I get to go in and do something really cool every day. I'm hyped and excited to go in to shift every single day that I, I am scheduled to work. And um, I think it's knowing that there's something different, that there there's something um, exciting that could potentially happen on my shift and that you know i'll be a, a part of that um but really it is just being a part of something big for those of you guys that are currently in college um i think this is actually a really op awesome opportunity and a very good time for you to really start thinking more about if you want a, a career or if, if there's something that you want to you want to do that's even kind of on the periphery of, of space or the space force you know um, look into some of those different stem courses that are specific to planetary sciences earth sciences um, those are the things that are really going to get you in your, your foot in the door uh, i remember i was a, a physics uh, a major and i ended up going on a couple of different field trips and, and conferences um, that allowed me to, to kind of broaden my horizon a bit to see what it, what I might be able to do, you know, in terms of a job. Um, in terms of, you know, working with the military or, or you know, being interested in, in working with the military, whether that's as a, a military member or a civilian, um, I would just encourage you guys to go to spaceforce.mil. Uh, that's the Space Force's website. Uh, they have all kinds of information on there about different careers, uh, different jobs, both in the military and, and outside as a civilian. Would I be a good fit in the Space Force? I'm going to turn answer that question by asking you a question. If, do you want to be on the, the cutting edge? Do you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself? Um, and do you want to be a part of history? Uh, if you answered yes to those three questions, then the Space Force is probably somewhere you should stop by and say hi. Does it matter what really your, your background is? Um, if you, you've got 
the, the drive, the determination and the will to be a part of something that's bigger than yourself, then yeah, we, we want you and, and we'll take you. Thank you, Sergeant Rucker, for being a part of this and, and tag teaming with me on this. Um, Astrid, Michael, Boaz, thank you guys for, for coming in and you know giving us these questions. These are some really good questions you guys have. Thank you for your time and thank you for your service. Yes, thank you guys for the information that you provided today. I learned a lot. Thank you guys. Thank you.